the financial planner presented by BSC Investors Protection Fund. Welcome to Financial Planner. From this episode, we go a little deeper in various aspects of financial markets of and helping you understand the securities market. And what better way but to start with understanding what really are securities. And joining me for that is Jayanth Pai. Jayanth, thank you again for joining <laughs> us. Uh, you know, the basic crux that we start uh, with as far as the financial financial markets or the securities market is understanding the definition of securities, right? So what is it? Uh, we'll go by the SCRA, that is the Securities Contracts Regulation Act. Now as per them, it's an inclusive definition, wherein they mentioned a list of items which conform to the term security. For example, shares and stocks, debentures, it can include uh, uh, even all collective units of collective investment schemes, that includes mutual funds also then uh, even uh, government securities recently the act has been amended also to include futures and options contracts traded on the stock market the derivatives so derivatives traded on the ex exchange rate derivatives are part of the uh, securities uh, just to put it extremely simply if i say that it's essentially all the instruments in which you can buy sell or invest is is, is what a security is, right? Broadly, that is it. So, any marketable security uh, in, is part of this. So, marketable is either listed on a stock exchange or in some way, if you can buy and sell it. Mm -hmm. What about a, a, a particular uh, sort of instrument which is not perhaps marketable? Is that not a security? No, it's not a security under this definition. Okay. So for instance, in a simple PPA understanding or a simple parlance, it may be but it yeah. may not be otherwise, right? Yeah, right, yeah. Okay. So, uh, essentially, if we were to point down, there's shares, there are debentures, uh, there are bonds, there is uh, debenture shares and mutual funds, etc. Yeah, all come under uh, the definition of securities. Yeah, even some exotic things like warrants. Hmm. You know, all these are also part of it. Okay. Also part of the securities uh, the contracts. Regulation Act, which defines yeah. what really securities are in terms of understanding as far as the financial market or the securities market is concerned. Yeah, but for a layman, it doesn't matter really. I mean, like, you don't have to go too deep into this because it's more of a legal definition. Mm -hmm. But broadly, let us look at the other way, like what does not form part of it. Okay, so what does not form uh, part of usually it? Usually things which are under a particular statute, for example, PPF, mm. which is under a PPF Act, that is not part of it. Insurance policies, either ULIPS or traditional, they are not part of it. Although ULIPS are passed through vehicles, mm. for some reason they are not part of this. So th these two or three important fixed deposits are not part of it. Mm -hmm. So these are some exceptions. So essentially, actually, uh, you know, if we say that the fixed deposit is where you invest the money, but it's not marketable, right? Yeah. So essentially, so, marketable would be an important word in terms of defining what securities are, right? Yeah, that's very important. Yeah. Or even for an insurance policy. So I cannot give my insurance policy to another. It's not like a tradable instrument. Yeah. So security is essentially for a common person's understanding is a, an instrument where you invest, which can be traded, which can be bought or sold. Yes. Yeah. Now that can be either on the exchange or even if the institution acts as a market maker, like in an open-ended mutual fund, mm -hmm. the institution, the mutual fund will buy and sell. So it's not really listed, although there are there's an option of listing, but people usually go to the fund itself. But even that forms part of it. So somebody should act as a market maker. Okay. So uh, what really is the function of a securities market? You know, one is about understanding. So securities we have addressed in terms of instruments, what all it includes what all it does not include and you know essentially in common words what it means what is a securities market so in that case a market where I can buy and sell all the securities yeah but if you're asking about the objectives why were these set up okay so Let's basically go back to there, there are three broad objectives one is price discovery for instance if there is no market you will not know what is the price of the asset that you own so then it could be a bilateral negotiation that you will come to me, you want to buy it. So based on your and my need, we will determine the price. But yeah. that's a very long-winded process. Yeah. So in a market, lot of participants come together and their demand and supply determines the price. So this is a very important function. Yeah. Second is that all the securities listed on the exchange, they, uh, the companies which have issued those securities are bound to give 
periodic information to the exchanges which in turn is disseminated to the participants hmm. so this ensures that there is information symmetry hmm. so the same information reaches a broad set of participants at the same time and third is also they are most of the stock exchanges are sros that is self regulatory organizations so they ensure that a lot of the uh, that the conduct between the buyer and seller is done in such a way that the sanctity of contract is maintained for instance i enter a transaction with you but but uh, you know the whatever deal we do today is uh, we we both have to fulfill it till the end so that is what the exchange ensures so that helps to build confidence in the economy also mm -hmm. you know along with the market okay so these are the objectives uh, as far as securities markets are concerned you know the establishment of securities uh, market so it can also be like of course an exchange is a securities market where there are different kinds of uh you know different kind of people who come who own a particular security or various securities and can trade it's a common platform as you explain and to build this and also you know because of the transparency because of the entire conduct it bring, brings in the sanctity of the contract yeah. uh it can be of various uh, securities it can be like the commodities exchanges that oh, yeah. we have we have your equity exchanges and so, so forth okay yeah now uh other than that what really constitutes securities market provision of liquidity that's mm -hmm. very important mm -hmm. because once the company issues the securities to us you know they will not act as a market maker mm -hmm. we have to look for buyers outside the company mm -hmm. so that is where the securities market helps so if i go and approach a broker and say i want to this uh, sell uh, say 100 shares of reliance reliance industries will not buy it from me but the broker will then put in the order in the market and somebody else will purchase it from me so that's a very important function well on that note uh, you know uh, you've just sort of uh, briefly addressed that what are the securities one need to or could look at investing in and more in terms of the retail investors but we'll go and dig little deeper on that particular aspect when we return after a short break so come back and we'll tell you which are the securities that you need to keep an eye on The Financial Planner presented by BSC Investors Protection Fund. Welcome back to Financial Planner. We were discussing about the securities market. Well, uh, Jen, what is the real role of exchanges or securities market? The two basic markets, one is the primary market, one is the secondary market. The primary market helps in fund raising. Hmm. So corporates and other in institutions who want to raise money, they approach these markets and through them they approach a set of investors diffuse set who will then uh, invest in those securities so that is the primary market once the investor actually invest then the secondary market's role is to provide liquidity to those investors to offload those securities if and when they want to and also to bring in a new set of investors who will buy the securities from these people so these are the two broad areas okay uh, as far as uh, hedging is concerned it also provides that opportunity right Yeah now hedging can be done through some derivative instruments so th the same exchange can tr has two segments one is the cash segment which are these securities and these same securities are uh, converted or they form a part of the derivatives market also so by hedging if, if there is an investor who does not want to sell the securities right now who wants to hold on but at the same time wants to reduce the price risk of you know the the asset falling so they can take a Uh, a mirror exposure or a counter exposure in the derivatives market this is known as hedging mm -hmm. so, so for that you have uh, uh, options are a good way of hedging or you can even do like shorting the futures uh, futures and options are the two main ways of hedging in indian markets at least okay well let's not go uh, deep into <laughs> shorting uh, the futures and option market which would be for the basic lessons that we are learning today could be a little 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 tougher lesson to do but let's go on to understand what are the securities that one can invest in when i'm talking about that i'm talking about a retail investor so on okay. that note both debentures uh, i'm sorry uh, debt and equity what are the ways or the securities that uh, a retail investor can invest in and also if you could give a sort of differentiations between them so if you look at exchange traded instruments equity shares are the most common ones exchanges also list uh, uh, debt instruments in the form of debentures corporate debentures are listed 
you have some government securities also listed, but they are not very liquid. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's more for institutional investor. It play. Is, yeah, it is more because the ticket size is very large. Like mm -hmm. one crore is the no, the normal ticket size. So by ticket size, I mean the minimum amount to be traded. Mm -hmm. So it's beyond the reach of most. But you can take a proxy exposure into such things through debt mutual funds. Okay. Yes. So mutual funds, both equity and debt, they are primarily retail products. Hmm. So for very small amounts, say 5,000 rupees or something, you can uh, invest in a mutual fund and you can get an exposure in these through that. And mutual funds, open-ended ones, they also undertake market making. They will buy and sell whenever you want. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, uh, on that note, uh, Gent, we'll take a short break. But we'll come back and address your queries. And maybe some of your queries will get the answers or will find the answers for a lot of viewers who are watching us. So do it on and help us and he understand different questions as far as financial planning is concerned. The Financial Planner, presented by BSC, Investors Protection Firm. Well, uh, the query that we have today, Jayanth, is from Amit Singh from Delhi. His main goal is as far as planning for his retirement is concerned. And he's very diligently given us the details of his investments. His monthly take-home salary is about 80,000 rupees. His current saving in the bank is about 12 lakh rupees. Monthly expenses about 30,000 rupees. Home loan car EMI comes up to 15,000 is what he has uh, said. And therefore, the monthly savings also is about 30,000 rupees. As far as the investments of Amit is concerned, he has an... Um, you know, a ULIP policy that he is invested in, which is about uh, the premium is about lakh and the cover that he has taken is about 10 lakh. Again, he has also, uh, you know, done another ULIP, HDFC Young Start, which is, I think, uh, would be more in terms of his uh, child insurance, I'm not sure, mm. but a total cover of about 7 lakh and an annual premium of about 70,000. Another LIC policy, again, a sum assured of about 3 lakh. I don't think uh, it's not a uh, uh, it's not a ULIP policy, yeah. it's an endowment policy yeah. with an um, uh, you know, premium that he pays at about 17,500. So this is as far as his portfolio, his savings etc. is concerned. His key issue or agenda is with regard to the planning for his retirement. Your thoughts on the first glance as far as his portfolio is concerned. Yeah, I'm happy that he is thinking about retirement, but unfortunately, he has not given some details which may be pertinent. For mm. instance, when he plans to retire, currently his monthly income uh, expense are 30,000. So, what does he expect that to be later on? There are a few things, but broadly, I'm happy that he's saving a lot. It's around 38% of his income, which is very high. Mm. I mean, usually people don't even say 20. Mm. So, that's one good thing. Uh, second is what I feel is that he should bolster his insurance cover first. You know, because... Uh, you mean to say he needs to increase his cover? His life right insurance now? cover, yeah. yeah. So, the current cover is very low. It's only 20 lakhs. Mm. If you take a rough thumb rule, uh, so I he has around 9.5 lakhs uh, income per year. So, 10 times of that will be roughly 1 crore. Mm. So, from he should Im immediately buy a insurance policy for the differential amount of 80 lakhs. So, okay. And uh, online insurance covers are available pretty cheap now. And so also, it is a pure vanilla insurance cover. Yeah. No investment option. You have to pay your money and that's about it and forget about it, right? Yeah. So, th that mental block he'll have to overcome because most people don't like to do that. They want something in return. But whenever you choose those policies, they are all very expensive, expensive and opaque. Expensive, yes. So, he has already taken a few like this uh, ICICI, ULIP and all that. So, I suggest he does not take any more of such things because they are very opaque and the impact cost of stopping them midway is very high. Hmm. So, what he can do is for his retirement, once he estimates how much he requires, then he has to work backwards and see how much he has to start saving today. Hmm. So, for that, a diverse set of instruments will, would be good. Now, already he has this, these policies. Hmm. So, he could supplement these with two things. One hmm. is a PPF uh, investment every year hmm. of up to 70,000 hmm. because that's a maximum allowed, although there is a proposal that it be increased to 1 lakh. Hmm. So, but as of now, it's 70. Second is... Uh, uh, he could begin investing in some good mutual funds. Okay. So, like what I uh, said, uh, like in the previous episode, a large cap and a mid cap combination would could be, be good. Could so, be work uh, yeah. For him. So, uh, very quickly, tell me, Jayant, if he needs to uh, look at pension plans or not at all. 
I would not suggest. They are all very. Why so? Yeah, I'll tell you because first of all, in pension plans, once the vesting period is over, that is on his date of retirement, only one third can be withdrawn, and balance has to be compulsorily annuitized. Hmm. You know, so and usually the annuities available are in the range of five to six percent as of today. Of course, things may change, but see, why would you want to lock yourself into something which is a compulsion? I would suggest like some freedom. Okay, well, uh, uh, you know, Jayant would like some freedom, but the basic advice that's coming for you, Amit, is essentially to increase your insurance cover. Uh, that can be done, and you should look at a pure term cover, which will be a very cost-effective measure to increase the cover. And as far as planning for your, uh, your you know, retirement is concerned, uh, Jayant has advised that you could look at PPF, or also you could look at uh, investing in certain mutual funds and build a corpus in the combination of uh, large cap funds and cap funds if you have any further query do please please free to come and write to us and we'll address those queries as well let's move on to the next uh, query which is of Vinay uh, Vinay is uh, wanting to know that should he split his salary uh, you know regarding savings and investments he's given the detail he's 30 years of age he has a salary of about 4.25 lakh per annum uh, he's planning for marriage in a coming year and he has a saving of about 1 lakh he wants to know that uh, how much should he be saving against his salary and if uh, he's also invested around 35,000 in mutual funds and its value now is around 13,000 he says. So uh, is it that he's not taking good look at taking right decision at these he wants to understand all that. So what's your advice? See one good thing is that he has made some mistakes at a time when he has time to recover from them. Hmm. So I suggest he not be disheartened because his 35 has become 13. So I am presuming he has done this in around 2008 hmm. and that too in some infra funds or something. Hmm. So that's why he has lost so much value. Hmm. But he has time to recoup that. Hmm. So from now on what hmm. he should always strive is to in, uh, save at least 25% of his income hmm. based on his current salary and as his salary grows hmm. he should try to increase it to say around 35 to 40% uh, uh, eventually. Mere savings are not enough. Hmm. So he has to supplement, I mean convert those savings into investments Investment. of some form. And as we discussed in our previous episodes, it's about all about inflation and meeting yeah. various requirements and grow your money. Yes? Yeah. So now how do we do that? Hmm. He could begin by uh, investing in a large and mid cap fund combination. So in large cap he could choose say Franklin Blue Chip or say an index fund like Franklin India Index Fund. Uh, and supplement that with a mid cap fund say an IDFC premier or an HDFC mid cap so this will give him good diversification and also he has some uh, savings which uh, he has a savings of around 1 lakh but at the same time he has his goal of marriage hmm. so if he has a goal which is coming within the next one year I suggest that he uh, park this money in a simple debt fund Okay. so for okay. example a BSL medium term or Kodak floater there are several good ones so he could do that and because whenever he wants to withdraw the impact cost of that withdrawal will be very low. If he does not an equity fund and the market crashes, so then okay. when he requires the money at short notice, it will be difficult. Investment Ladder presented by BSC Investors Protection Fund. Yes, uh, well on that note, uh, Jen, we've really absolutely run out of time. But when I, as Jen said, that because you have a marriage that is coming very soon, as far as your 1 lakh rupees that you've kept aside, it would be good that you look at uh, as far as that investment uh, in a debt fund uh, rather is concerned. As far as your other areas, it's equity investment, a combination of large and mid-cap funds. More queries that you may have, please do write to us. And that's the what goes to all our other viewers as well. Any basic query that you have, any part of the lesson that you think you need to know more about, do write in to us and we'll be happy to address them. Thank you for watching. The Financial Planner, presented by BSC, Investors Protection Fund.